Now, one thing as investors, I believe that it is our job to understand where the market has been, where it currently is, and where it's heading. Because we want to do that so we can better position ourselves with our cash positions, our marketing strategies, our operation-wise, of saying where is the market going to be in the next three months, six months, 12 months, and where it's heading. So you're not taking on a really expensive, risky flip if we're at the top of the market and we're heading down. So we want to incentivize you guys to really watch this stuff and understand it and do your best to predict the market. Now I'm not going to say I don't know if it's going to go up, I don't know if it's going to go down, but I want to provide you guys the tools and the information to make the decisions on your own. So we'll go ahead and dive into this. So this is the September newsletter market update. Now I pulled this data from a couple different sources and I usually put it all down here in the bottom of where I got this stuff. Uh, this one is directly from the San Antonio Board of Realtors. The average price of a sale home is $246,515, which is a 3.9% increase year over year. So anytime you see this YOY, that stands for year over year. So it's basically saying we have got in appreciated in value 3.9% since this month than last month. Now, as an investor, I've always questioned this too, of say $246,000, like I don't deal with prices that high. I don't see that very often. And it always made me wonder, like I don't see where those prices are sold. And one thing that I think can affect that is we don't have very many expensive homes here in San Antonio that are in the multi-millions of dollars or even in the 800 thousand plus but when those homes do sell they can influence our average price so I like to stay around the or look at the median sale price because that just takes in all the sales into accounts so where is the middle and it's a lot more stable it doesn't fluctuate and jump as high and drop as low depending on if a really huge couple of really big expensive homes sell or if they don't so the median sale price is at 200,000 which it has held consistently there for about two to three months 5.2% increase year over year. The total sales were 2,426, which is a 9% increase year over year. And if you remember my market update I did last month, we actually saw a decrease. And it was the first time that we, or sec, second straight month in a row, we had seen decreases in sales volume uh, here in the San Antonio MLS. But since we had that decrease this month, it looks like a lot of them just pushed into the next month because we've seen a huge spike in the amount of homes sold. Now, if you look at the Sabor's report they put out, theirs runs on a 1st through the 30th, and the where I pull my information runs on the 15th through the 15th. So now the average rental price has been taking up and is ticked up again for this month of $1,461, which is a 9% increase year over year. Now, I like to plot these things on graphs so that you guys can kind of see and understand the market cycles. Now, this one is June 10th through August 2016. So, if you've been in real estate for a while or heard other people talk, they said about the bottom of the market was right around that 2010 area. And this data does support it because here is your summer month. It spiked and then it dropped down. And then it didn't get as high as the previous year right here. So right here was the bottom of the market as far as median sales prices. Now, I've always heard in real estate that it runs in cycles just like everything else. And it's a, usually a three to five up, one to three down. And now you can see here that we have had, there's one, one year, two year, three year, four year, five years of increased sales volumes. And one thing you can take away from this thing too is if you're doing those flips or you're trying to sell a home of when is the best time to get the best prices. And everybody knows the summer months are, or heard that summer months are the best time to get the highest price. And this data does support that. So here's always your summer months and you'll always see a little spike right here in December, drop off in January, raise through the, through the summer, drop off, spike in December, and come back through. So keep that stuff in mind that we are in the fifth year and we have kind of planed out. So now we are moving into the winter. We should start seeing this dropping off the next few months. Monthly rents do go in the same cycles as well. <clears throat> and if you, for all you landlords out there, that best months to get the highest rents, shockingly, is during your summer months with a little spike in December. Now I couldn't get the data back as far. Uh, 
of where I pulled this source, but I'm sure if we were to trail this back to the 2010 mark, we would see that follow the very similar cycle as the median sales prices did. So we see that we had a huge spike this last month here, in, uh, or this summer, and then it dropped down and it started ticking back up a little bit. We are, but we are still higher than the previous year. Now, one area we like to, or what controls real estate prices in our beliefs is the jobs, like who is coming to San Antonio and who is hiring and what kind of employment do we have here? So <clears throat> this is information that I pulled from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So employment in San Antonio is 1,077,955, which is down from last month, which was like 1,078,000. And now we have a 2.12% increase year over year, which is higher than what we had last month. But we have lost 8,346 decrease since the all-time historical high set in May of this year. So we are ticking back down in the number of jobs that we have here, or employment that we have here in San Antonio. And our unemployment rate is 4.09%, which is still an increase for year over year of 2.2%, but is the second second straight month over year over year increases but one thing to look into this it is a 0.68 percent increase since I got a little typo though 16 year low set in April of 2016 so what's that meaning and like we have in, our unemployment rate has gone up 0.68 percent since the all-time low that we have hit April, we hit it in April of 2016, and we haven't seen it get this high since almost back before 2000. So unemployment is starting to tick back up. So it could be an early indicator that the job market's kind of getting a little shaken here in San Antonio, and we're moving into a, a new cycle. Now, I like to plot on here our 20-year employment, so you can kind of see how our market has reacted. And now, pulling this in kind of information... I kind of played around with other states, and Texas by far has the most consistent and stable job market in any other state that I looked at in the United States. That includes California, that includes New York, Florida, Arizona, all of them, we have the most stable market. So be blessed that we are living in Texas. Um, one of the things that you can see from this is the, the previous market crashes. Right here where you can see that we dropped off and we kind of trickled down here was this was the aftermath of the 2000 dot com uh, bubble. And now you can see that we've gone up and this is the 2007-2008 real estate bubble where we dropped off, we stayed around here for a while and then we jumped back up again and now we've been consistently going up ever since. But now one thing I take away from this is just looking at the, the length of time it was after the crashes and when it started going back up. So I can't really see the years here, but just the time we're due for another kind of market cycle or something to change because it, it can't go up consistently forever without it going down over the last several crises or crashes or whatever you want to call them, market cycles. So now another thing I look at is the 20 year unemployment. And now you got to think this is reverse of what the previous graphs are. When we get a high unemployment, that's bad. We want this chart to stay low down here. So now here, this one has the dates on it as well. So it's a little easier to tell. But started in 96, and this is after the, or the early 90s crash, and we trickled back down. We stayed down here in the bottom, and then right around this 2000 mark for the dot-com bubble, unemployment shot back up and we peaked out at 7% and now you can see that after we stayed up here for a while we dropped back down we stayed on the bottom you can see how it just kind of bounces around here at the bottom up down up down up down and then right around that August 2007 and the two went right into 2008 right of the real estate crash unemployment shot back up again and stayed up here for a while and then it trickled back down which is like we said earlier the bottom of the real estate market was about that 2010 mark so now you can see we created a bunch of jobs unemployment dropped back down and this is where we are today now one thing i take away from this is just looking at the correlation of time that we stayed at the bottom of these markets before we started going back up and you can see that we have bounced around here at the bottom for a while unemployment went back up it's dropped a little bit um, and now 
is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? I don't know. But looking at the previous data, to me, it seems like we're due for another market cycle here in the near future. Now, I always like to look at other articles here in uh, San Antonio or in the economies, Texas economy, world economy, and just kind of seeing what's going on in the world. Now, this is a chart, an article I found that had like 35 pages of different graphs, articles, and between the different markets and stuff. And if you guys reach out to me, I can get you a copy of that or link to that full article. Um, now, this one is the month of inventory based on the United States and here in Texas. So you can always see Texas has traditionally performed better than the rest of the United States. We kind of stayed pretty even here for a while. But here is the current mark, that, uh, 2013. And I'm sure if anybody here in Texas, they can feel that month's inventory, the Sales, I mean, the second you put a house in the market, it barely lasts, I mean, depending on what market you're in, a couple weeks, maybe a couple days, without getting multiple offers. So our month of inventories has been trickling down and staying down here at the bottom, which is much better than the rest of the state, or the United States. Now, as far as here in Texas, here is our major metro areas as far as months of inventory go. And something to say here, the black line is Houston. So now we all know that the oil prices in Houston's market is, is heavily dependent on the energy sector and it has tricked back up in the last couple of years. Their month's inventory has going up and if you're in the Houston market you hear people saying the distress levels are a little higher, they're getting better deals, or marketing starting to perform a little better. But if you are in the Dallas Austin area you know that things are tight. The second you put houses on the market they're gone that you send out hundreds of letters with no responses or the foreclosures are getting hundreds of letters. As that's just telling you that months inventory is down and they say an equilibrium market is about that six month uh, time frame to whether it's a buyer's market or a seller market. So here we are still in a very strong seller's market. So take that for what you guys want and Go from there, and that is the end of the presentation. Uh, like I said, we are going to go ahead and build this out and include more information, but we just wanted to get this first one out here so you guys can kind of see the format, what we're wanting to do. We want to start including more articles, and I want to have um, different articles that I read. I want to have links to them in the presentation so you guys can go ahead and read the articles that I've read uh, to formulate your own opinions. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful and I look forward to meeting you guys around. All right, thanks for watching. Hey everybody, really appreciate you guys took the time to watch our market update. Now below we have several links to several articles, blogs that we've written, and just additional information for you guys. Now like we said, this is a work in progress. We want to build this out and give more information to our community. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or anything, or just want to reach out to us, go to our Facebook page, leave a comment, and we'll get back to you guys right away. See you guys next month.